Warning, the following podcast contains strong language, which some listeners may find offensive. If you do, up yours. That's only if you don't listen to the podcast. Otherwise, not up yours. Did you know the Untitled Wrestling Podcast is on all of the social media outlets? Give us a like, follow, share, subscribe, or even a review if you're feeling generous. Facebook and YouTube at Untitled Wrestling Podcast. Twitter, Twitch, and Discord at Untitled Rest Pod. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Untitled Wrestling Podcast. Uh, it is Tuesday. I forgot what I'm saying here. It is Tuesday. You know what that means. It's me, your boy, Big Tasty. Joined, as always, by Faye and Jay. Faye, how's it going? I'm too warm. We, yeah, it's, it's, but it's very cold. So, you know, this is all, you know weird yeah it shouldn't you shouldn't be it should be cold uh jay how are you in your in your haunted mansion uh it's when this goes out it's end seven days so i'll probably be a lot happier then than i am right now oh shit it is yeah what are you doing are you, are you doing a little replay are you doing anything in particular or you know what i'm not i, I was i was toying with doing a stream of <gasps> my favorite mission on mass effect so Do suicide it? mission from effect too Nah, not to serve. I'll watch it. Cheeky, cheeky, cheeky little suicide mission for the boys. It makes me so, so stressed out, that mission, Tasty, and you know that. <laughs> I've never played uh, Mass Effect. Ever. Well, I, I I have been pestering Warren Banks on Twitter. He's not got back to me yet because we spoke about this in our interview. We, we spoke about Mass Effect probably more than we did about wrestling. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I, I was going to do one of my favourite missions, which was from Mass Effect 3 in the DLC. But I, I just can't be asked. It's too much effort. Oh. Um. May, maybe I'll if if after off the back of me saying this, there is demand for me to do a Mass Effect stream. I will play through all three, all three of the games, and maybe even Andromeda if I'm feeling nice. Um, I, think you should, I think you should just do Mass Effect One again. Just exp- because remember, well, well like, is the is the remake like better, like control wise? Yeah. Yeah, because they basically merged the controls with Mass Effect. Well, they've merged the Mass Effect 2 controls with, like, the reload system of Mass Effect 1. So you've got the weapons overheating, but everything else play, just plays like Mass Effect 2. Because Mass Effect 1's, like, my favourite story, but, like, trying to play the original, like, game is, like, trying oh. to, like... It's, try, it's like trying to bundle a drunk dog into a taxi. It's, That's it's like, like trying yeah. to play Goldmine. Yeah, it, it, you know, you go back and play, like, a, a 95-year-old I, game, and you're like, oh, no, this is not it. I fucking said this about Goldeneye when all y'all were like, "Oh, Goldeneye is coming out." Can I say it's not as good? It, well, it, is, it, it, it is as good as you remember it, but I, games have gotten a lot better since then. Can I, I just say like, right? It, it's gonna handle like dog shit, and you're gonna hate it. They say I said this and then didn't play it at all, and then Tom got me an N64 controller for my Switch, and I'm back on my bullshit. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the, the sound of the club haunts my waking dreams. Yeah. <laughs> the, the club uh. that looks like a fucking spirit level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like fucking Handy Andy's coming on to do you in. Yeah. So. <laughs> no no wow, one needs that in your life. The spirit level fire and bullets at you. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, right, should we move on to some news and actually talk about some wrestling? Uh, there's not a great yeah. amount of news this week, so we'll we'll fire through it. Um, um, yeah, I mean, I've got I'm just fiddling up and down the the news websites trying yeah. to look for things. Uh, can we start at the top, Jay, with the, with the funnest news of the week about some wrestling company that might not be on TV anymore? <laughs> I've already got that open ready. <laughs> what was um, that noise? Oh, haven't you seen like what's happening with NWA? Um, yes, I have. It's fantastic. So, and- NWA had a TV deal announced with CW, which used to show SmackDown for anyone keeping track. And Supernatural. Didn't they also show like, the no. DC verse on like on like TV? The Jericho Megaverse. Um maybe. Who knows? Um so yeah, they did a spot at their last pay-per-view about two weeks ago called Sawain. Um and it was essentially James Mitchell and a load of deviants doing a load of drugs. Um <laughs> not like hiding the drugs. Flat- well, they weren't hiding the fact that it looked like they were all snorting cocaine, and oh, it was Billy Corgan's idea, so it could well have been cocaine. They were doing nose Corgan's. drugs, hey? Nose drugs. Nose drugs. He's, uh, he's the, not excited the, to tour with Green Day, that's what it is. The, there was a guy in a gimp mask doing a load of drugs with J- Father James Mitchell, um, and 
apparently now it's it, according to Nick Hausman of House of Wrestling, um, it's going to it could have a negative effect on end WA's TV deal. Um, because you can't do drugs on TV, even if it is on pay per view, unless you're AAA. So, apparently. So what happened was uh, yeah, originally they had TV. It's fine. Well, yeah, Mexico was like a lord upon itself. Don't worry about that. Um, <laughs> so originally they'd signed two TV deals with CEW, one to uh, NWA Power, which is their weekly show that they show on Fight and YouTube at the moment, um, and the other for a new reality TV series. Uh, it's now being reported there is an active push by those higher up at the CW to have NWA's content air solely on their app and not on their actual television networks. Wow. <laughs> it's... <laughs> It, it's noted that Corgan was told the network was only concerned about what was happening on TV and would not be concerned about with what happened on pay-per-view. Uh, after the CW was tagged in comments regarding the spot, there is now a 90% chance that the NWA reality show and power will air on the app and not on television. Wow. Jesus. That's uh, oh, incredible. Oh, wait there. It gets better. The report also stated that the reality show is being paid for by Corgan and will feature his recent wedding so it's it's not an NWA reality TV show. It's a Billy Corgan reality TV show. Fucking hell! Home with Bill Pumpkins. That's what it oh is. god, it's, this is, it just gets better and better. Like is it just gonna be called? End... It's just be called Billy Corgan, comma smashing pumpkins. <laughs> it's just yeah. gonna be called remembers one. <laughs> remembers um, no, never remembers one. Don't, I want to remember. I still got one. a copy of that album. And it's it's got like. I can't remember uh, High Five Rush, which is one of Jay, my games of the year. Jay, I never Actually bought. One on it. I never bought. There's one album because my ears work, and so like. Ah, oh, mate, I, I heard one song. I was a Smashing Pumpkins fan, and I got tricked into it. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, um. So yeah, yeah, that's 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 a hell of a story. Um. Yeah, don't do drugs on TV, kids. Um. Unless you yeah. want to get um, pumped on that. So, rem- speaking of Billy Corgan, remember when he was in TNA? On I, do remember, TNA. I do remember when he tried to buy TNA. Do you, do you remember this fellow when Billy Corgan, like, legitimately... No, I tried, don't. ...tried to trick... Well, not trick, but he tried... He basically bought TNA off Dixie Carter, and then she was like, no, you didn't, mate. And he was like, no, I did. Is this real? I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, no, this is, this is real. Like, he, he gave them, like, a loan, and then he, he kind of convinced himself that he bought the company when he hadn't. This is shoot, brother. This is this is real. This is real world. He, he, he kind of like it was like he bought shares in the company, wasn't it? And he thought he took over the company. And then like the Basham fucking brothers were involved for some reason or uh, whatever. Yes. Um. Uh, the like, rich, and like, rich, and like, and like one of them might be a Nazi. I'm not sure. Maybe both of them. I, I don't know. It, no, uh, it wasn't. The, that wasn't the Bashams. That was the Harris twins. Oh, the Harris twins. Sorry, same fucking white supremacist. This all looking sounds motherfuckers. so made up. No, no, this this is legit real. Like. Genuinely, we haven't, saw, we haven't even we haven't even got to the is it real or is it fake TNA yet. This is just us like segueing in, into it, but we're just talking about something that did actually happen, which is mad to think about. Yeah, that was, I feel that like was my D and D paranoia that, um, of not trusting anyone is that, like carrying over to TNA. That was a that was around the time of a uh, when like TNA nearly got put out of business because they used the Lucha Underground wrestler, wasn't it? <laughs> That was when, so this is also real. So, wrestler Hernandez joined, rejoined. He, he was a, a, an original TNA, well, original TNA guy with a homicide in LAX, the original LAX. Mm-hmm. And then he left and went to Lucha Underground. And the Lucha Underground had like so much shit with their like contracts, like apparently the network. Like, so normally it, it was like WWE style contracts, but it was implied that they'd be able to wrestle elsewhere, but they couldn't. So they, they weren't getting paid, they weren't getting used, and they weren't allowed to wrestle. So a lot of people were kicking off. Uh, Hernandez basically just went, oh yeah, I'm back, I'm I'm out of my contract, can I come back to Impact? And they were like, yeah, right. So they, they basically um, had this new segment going with the beatdown clan, basically the, the, hair business. Uh, the hair business, but before the hair with business, Loki it was like, it was MVP, oh, right. Kenny King, Loki, Samoa Joe, and I think Homicide joined briefly. And then Hernandez turned up on TV and they filmed, because of the way TNA was working at the time, they basically recorded like three months worth of TV tapings in like two days. Oh, and then, and, what do now. Yeah, and then the Beatdown Clan was prominently featured in like all the big angles. And then literally like a day after they filmed it all, it was like they got a cease and desist off Lucha Underground or the Outray Network saying, yeah, you can't use Hernandez on TV because he's on the contract. 
So they had to scrap like three months worth of of, of, of TV tapings and redo them. Oh my god! Yeah, what a time to be alive. Oh, it was a wild time. <laughs> and then and then that was that was around a time when everything was really fucked because it was the end. It was like the the, the last days of Dixie. Um, it was <laughs> and so we had um we had, and, and here is our first TNA storyline, uh, which I I was. Um, reminded of by Mr. Marky D on YouTube. Shout out to him because he, he's like the one guy who covers TNA on YouTube, and now he's fucking feasting because it's it's hot again. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this was Nick Aldis's world title reign. Sorry, Magnus's world title reign. So Nick Aldis originally debuted in TNA as Brutus Magnus, the modern day gladiator, because he was yeah. on Gladiators on Sky One, uh, and they were like, "That's oh. a good gimmick." Let's just—he was called Oblivion, um, uh, if you're wondering. <laughs> um, so he basically debuted, and then for a long time he was in a tag team with Doug Williams called the British Invasion, and that was really good because they were a really fun tag team. Um, he once told me and Jay when we'd been drinking with him that um, on the TNA. UK tour, he had to get put through basically every show ended up with him getting 3D through a table, because it was the, the main event was always British Invasion versus Team 3D, and then he got put through the table, it was like the big finish and he said oh. when they got to, when they got to Birmingham, they didn't have like the normal tables so he got put was through like, like a, a new Japan table? <laughs> it was like a wooden dining table like Lan Travera style? <laughs> yeah, and he said it was fucking horrible, it was like the worst thing he's oh. ever done yep. um so anyway, it's all this all comes to a head, and they they do the whole CM Punk thing where AJ Styles wins the title off Bully Ray, and then just leaves because TNA like legitimately wouldn't pay him. Like th- this was like a real story. Like they they fucking nickel and dimed him over like twenty grand a year, and he just left and went to New Japan. Um, yeah. So oh b- before he left, they wrote this into the storyline. So he basically he left, and then Dixie Carter was like, right, we're gonna have a Dixieland match to. Um, to crown a, a, a champion because AJ's abandoned the company. So it was basically a cage match. Then you have to like go up the ramp and climb a ladder. And so you have to climb out the cage and then go up the ramp and climb up a ladder to get the title that was like over the entrance. Um, and it was Magnus versus Jeff Hardy. And they got to the, they took a tournament and they got to the final. And like Dixie Carter was trying to do a sex on Jeff Hardy to get him to like um, be a champion. Not explicitly, she was like having him over to for drinks. Despite the fact that the man has a documented alcohol problem, she was inviting him out to a bar to, to get hammered with her. Yeah. Um, and Magnus was like, "Oh no, I'm 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 playing it straight. I'm not going to do that." And anyway, um, so Jeff Hardy gets out, and then Magnus gets out, and then ETC3 is fucking around, and Jeff Hardy's fighting him, and then Magnus is fighting him because he's not like that. Um, and it's it's just it's the most overbooked in in a, in, a, in the history of a company that has a habit of overbooking matches. It is the most overbooked match in the entire universe because uh, okay. there's so many run-ins, there's so many like inter- interference. Anyway, get to a point. Jeff Hardy's about to climb the, the ladder. He's about to get the title. Rockstar Spud, you may know as Drake Maverick, runs out and he pushes the ladder over. And Jeff Hardy just takes the fucking most horrible bump you've ever seen onto the, the entrance off the ladder, onto the ramp. Oh, really? Oh, I don't know about that. I've seen him take a worse one. Into the end. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, to be fair. Um, I, I'd say, you know exactly what you want to mean when I said that. Are you talking about the one that started the Broken Universe? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a whole different that's a topic for another time uh, so then Magnus wins and he has lit- and, and he's Dixie's guy that's the whole thing he was in on it all along it was a whole conspiracy and then he's Dixie's like corporate champion basically and he has no word of a lie like a six month title reign where he wins like every match by like extreme fuckery that's yeah. awful yeah, he beats AJ Styles because like literally five people enter the ring just batter AJ to the point where he wins TNA, like, will never not think about it. Will never like not give me a headache. Like, genuinely, I feel like I'm how ha- I feel like the more you tell me about this, the more of a crisis I have over it. Sometimes what, what, I think back right and I see these old stories. I'm like, did I did I dream that or did that really happen? Tasty, wasn't this birthed out of like the Claire Lynch storyline? We're not doing we're not doing Claire Lynch today, mate. We're saving that for a special occasion. Oh, okay, okay. I don't want to know. Okay, we'll we'll save that for the Christmas special. So Faye has a really nice. <laughs> oh wait, just, no, no, we'll we'll save it for Faye's birthday special because that's in a couple of weeks. Yeah, it could be a Christmas special because it's about a birth or a miracle child. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Um. Yeah, it is. Uh, what was my other um, one? I had uh, my, my my other little tidbit for for TNA this week. Something I, I was for some reason thinking about 
was the time when Kurt Angle ran after Kevin Nash, screaming, I will buy you porn. <laughs> That's a thing that really happened. Um, uh, I, I love the fever dream. Was that, was that, that sounds like it was main event mafia time. Was, was that main event? I'm pretty sure it was. It was. I think it was like end of paparazzi. Paparazzi productions is a thing we're going to have to do at some point as well. Uh, that was paparazzi See, productions. I've heard about paparazzi productions and I've heard that's really that, good. That, that was actually really good because it was just Alex Shelley just being himself and like being yeah. funny. Yeah, it was Kevin Nash like originally as if he was going to bury the X division and then him just having a laugh with like Alex Shelley and like. Who was it? Alex Shelley, Jay Lethal, Sunjay, um, Saban. He was Loki was in it. Yeah, because there was the whole like thing where it was like Warrior, Warrior. Um, I can't remember who else. Nah, that is, that is good. Paparazzi Productions. Um, yeah. Okay then. I, I I'm tr- I'm trying to I'm trying to think what other TNA shit I can just like shoehorn into this very quickly. I mean, that, that, that's, that's your weekly segue into madness. <laughs> yeah. We, we, need, we need to explain King of the Mountain to Faye at some point, because that'll be... F- oh, actually, actually, th- this segues into a bit of news. Um, King of the Mountain, because uh, NXT have announced that they are bringing back... I can't remember what the fucking match is called now. Bear with me. Um, it will force gold. We're going to fucking... We're going to all make now, some money. It was like the deadline match or something like that. Oh, I've got a bit. While you're looking for it, I've got a bit of news. Um, well, a, a bit of Twitter conjecture that, that masquerading is news, according to people oh. online on the Twitters. Um, people who entered the gut check on the latest TNA tour of the UK had to pay to try out. Yeah. Wasn't that the case for like the last one as well? Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, but the Jarrett were there at that point, so I just assume that was just their carny bullshit. Yeah, they all had to I pay. Mean... Mate, they're gonna they're gonna have to pay for fucking Will Ospreay's contract somehow, aren't they? <laughs> uh, those, Iron survive. Those, those ice cream bars aren't gonna buy themselves. Exactly. Choc- um, Will they, Osprey chalk ices. They're, they're mostly melted, but they're, they're probably all right. If you, just, <laughs> you can like just drink them, you know. Like as soon as you open the paper, they're just all gonna like it's all gonna come out. So you just gotta be really yeah, you careful. You can't call them ice cream bars because he's because <laughs> he's from England. They gotta be chalk ices. I mean, it's more. It's, it's more like a milkshake. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it's just like the the, the transfer on is just smudged, so it kind of looks like we Scott, right. Scott the Moors left him in his booth for like half an hour, so they're kind of fucked. But you know they'll probably be alright. <laughs> The box is really yeah. soggy that they come in. You just got them from Iceland. It's That's fine. just condensation. It's fine. It's not leaked. <laughs> he, he put them in a cooler box, but he forgot to put ice in around them, so they all just melted anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah so uh, back back to back to um, what I was going on. So uh, NXT announced this week that the Iron Survivor Challenge match is back, which basically tasty is like t- take King of the Mountain and cross it with a scramble match. I was going to say, is this the match that they basically came up with and Shawn Michaels did like a load of coke and then fell asleep watching TNA? Um, well, Jeremy Bordash is like Shawn Michaels' right-hand man in NXT, <laughs> so that probably explains what happened. Um, Do you reckon like, you know, um, you, know, in, you know in Wayne's World 2, where like Wayne has like these dreams of Jim Morrison coming to him and telling him things? Wayne Leonard that... Indian? Yeah, do you reckon that happens with Shawn Michaels and it's just Jeremy Bordash in his dream telling him match ideas? Yes. Um... Like, so, but, Sean, reverse battle royal, mate. It's going to be brilliant. But basically, <laughs> it's um, it it's king of the mountain, but without the ladder bit. So and but then more like a championship scramble. So essentially, like you've got like I think it's like a a twenty five minute or a thirty minute time limit, and at the end of that, whoever's like holding the leading pin or the most pins, it's like an Ironman match, I guess. Is the it's, a penalty box? There is a penalty it's box. The king of the hell. Oh, you son of a bitch! I'm in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's an I it's a five way Iron Man match, but every time someone gets pinned or submitted, they have to go into the penalty box. They have, to go, the they have, to, they have to go into the box of sadness. It's great. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. That that's why I compared it to King of the Mountain because it's the penalty box. <laughs> <laughs> and this this was, if I'm not mistaken, this was also probably created around the time that Jeff Jarrett was back in the company. Jarrett was in the company at the time, yes. In <laughs> fact, no, no, Jarrett was in AEW by then. Oh, was he? Oh, he left. He left before oh. he could see his greatest. He left his the notebook. Take Ruth. And Sean Maybe. was like, "Oh, what's this?" 
<laughs> he just drawed it on like, the wall of the fucking catering, and like Sean was like, "Ooh, oh yeah." On a Je- nap. Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett just gave Jeremy Borash a bag of Global Force gold and said, <laughs> "Get King of the Mountain the thing. They'll do that shit in NXT." Okay. <laughs> oh, amazing. So yeah, it's it's essentially like a cross of an Iron Man match and a championship scramble in King of the Mountain. Um, but it that, but it must be said last. They did two last year, and they were both very good. So I'm actually quite excited about it. Um, no one's been announced for it yet, though, but it should be fun. Um, and the winner gets a number one contenders match. Um, right. What? Speaking of uh, WWE, should we talk about who came back this week? Well, thankfully, everybody came back from Saudi Arabia, unlike another time. No. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um, well, yeah, uh, Kyrie, aka Kyrie Sane, came back. Did she actually come back? Yeah, she came back and she's feuding with Bianca Bella, so that's gonna be nice. Um, does she look like Kyrie, or have they just made her back into like a Kabuki warrior person? Well, no, she's she's kind of joined damage control, but the interesting thing is that when she left WWE, she got written off because Bailey and Sasha beat her up. So, oh, okay, it's they, they've got they've got like a story. Uh, she she looked like proper Kyrie, like she didn't have a pirate stuff on, but she had like biker gear on. She looked cool as shit. Oh, um, nice. Like, as long as she's not, she not got like a magical nan, then it's fine. Nah, I I want it. I want it to um. No, to Vince, it's the same person, so it's fine. Oh, okay. I I mean, to be fair, Triple H is in charge now. Like Vince isn't allowed to do it because of of like the way that T.H.O. run the company. No, no, he's still he's still allowed a job. Like they they're still gonna keep him in fucking a job they're gonna, because they're gonna pay him an obscene amount of money. They're just not gonna let yeah. him write the fake storylines, well, basically. Yeah. T- TKO's thing is that whatever your job is, you need to stay in that role. You can't like deviate from the role. So oh, Vince oh, is okay. you're, you're, you're telling me that TKO wants Vince to know his role and shut his mouth. Pretty much, yeah. Hey. Um so basically Vince is stuck in his office in Titan Tower with this big dinosaur skull just sulking because he can't can't get Triple H to rip up the script a, and like rewrite Raw. A dinosaur sculpture? Haven't you seen his office in um, the Money in the Bank match? Nope. Or with Seth Rollins like dancing around his office? Yes, He's got, like, a I big have. Fuck ah, off dinosaur yeah. skull on his wall. I'm um, gonna be honest, I wasn't concentrating on anything in Vince's office, so that'll be why I didn't see it. That's fair. Except, <laughs> except for Seth. <laughs> except um, for Seth. But, remember yeah, that match uh, when Oz when Oz got legitimately distracted from winning a title because there was food on the table and because he's a fat man he couldn't resist looking at all the food and going oh yeah and then he won money in the bank by it like Baron Corbin dropping it because Asuka like kicked him every time I try and like justify what happened to that match my brain starts to like just bleed he is. remember yeah. as well Baron Corbin threw Alistair Black and Rey Mysterio off a of roof <laughs> he legitimately killed two people <laughs> yeah yeah this wasn't even in TNA. <laughs> Brian oh. Danielson and AJ Styles fought in Vince McMahon's office and apologized. Yes. Um, and they had Stephanie McMahon, who was definitely in that room and not live via like FaceTime, doing a bit. Oh, she was definitely in the same room as everybody else. Yeah. Def- absolutely. No fucking way she wasn't. Ah, uh, that that's that's a um, Faye looks so confused. I'm not even talking about TNA. I'm talking about the Fed right now. <laughs> Uh, should we talk about lot. someone? Speaking of the Fed, should we talk about someone who's not going to the WWE? Um, is it the one with the magical man? Yeah, well, not anymore because Saray has not signed for WWE. She's signed for somebody else. Yeah, um, she is signed for when I can find the name of it because I've never heard of them. But apparently, it's like it sounds more like it's an agency, doesn't it? Am I right yeah. in saying yeah. that? Um, where the? F- what is it? Did have it on open on my page. Is it on the Discord? Yeah, but it was on. Here we go. Uh, Sukaban. Um, she signed a multi-year deal with Sukaban. Um, they. So it it is a company. Um, it's a Joshi company who seems to be based out of the US. So, um, so I know you're saying that like they can't. They're not signed with WWE, but WWE let Shin go to Noah. Uh, well, I can, well I, can, I can tell you that um, the acting commissioner is Bull Nakano. 
Oh, sick. O- also, um, I-, I I have a feeling that Saray won't be going back to WWE based on the press conference that was put out where they literally said Saray, a former WWE performer who is ri- widely regarded as one of the most talented and under- underutilized pro wrestlers in the world. Ah, um, uh, okay. It's- yeah, I mean, to be fair, she's very good. Um, but yeah, it, it, I'm intrigued by this because it sounds like they're trying to kind of like do a bit of a hostile takeover of like a lot of stuff around the world, which is cool. So I googled it. Apparently, Sukaban means delinquent girl. Okay. In Japanese. So there you go. Um, yeah. That's, a, that's a great name for a wrestling. So, um, with them being an, an American based Joshi company, does, do, do we think there's potential for some collaborations with other companies with Impact, with AW, with places like that, maybe? I'd be shocked if they don't do something with TNA. Um, merch, right? They have tote bugs. They Ooh. have tote bugs. They have a cool logo as well, to be fair. I've just they seen have the bandanas. Logos. Yeah, they have. So, apparently, she's going to be part of the Cherry Bomb Girls. Yeah. Like, who were nice. who were stable there? Um, they have all oh, the hoodies, fucking sick. To be fair, that's real nice. It's it's nice, mate, isn't it? <laughs> do you, yeah. Do you like black and neon pink? Because uh, your best dad. Exclusively. Yes, I do. Um. <laughs> oh, that merch is gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, look at the black cherries. Big fan. Everyone should go look at this. Yeah, go Close go. The podcast um. right now. Go look stop, at the merch. Stop, or get back. it on your phone. Go and look at Sukaban's merch. Yeah, and, and buy some maybe. Um, yeah. Uh, should we talk yeah. a bit about speaking of Japanese stuff and Faye losing her shit? Should we talk a bit about Wrestle Kingdom? Oh, oh, oh. Well, should, should we? While while we're still on the subject of Joshi wrestling, should we talk about the other wrestler who uh, might be making a move somewhere? Well, oh yeah, we could actually. Yeah, we, we kind of just skimmed that one over, and it it's. I mean, to be it, fair, that's that's been so fucking all over the place, hasn't it? That I, I wouldn't even know how to. Uh... Well, it it sounds like there's another bidding war going on for another top tier talent, and that is none other than New Japan's strong women's world champion Julia. Um, the real bidding war of 2024, like the real take, bidding take, war of 24, take three or whatever the fuck we're on now, yeah. Yeah. Um. So, apparently, she has had talks with um. AW, well, AW and Stardom had talks about using her in some kind of crossover events. Obviously, you'd think that would be Forbidden Door or maybe Wrestle Dream because they Wrestle Dream. Lovely crossover there. Um, but no, it uh, Fightful didn't know if it had gone as far as like creative plans being developed, but there was a, a firm interest in using her in AW. Um, she's also expected at the performance center this month. Uh, and WWE have an interest, and of um, she's considered as a priority acquisition. Uh, another person who was kind of lumped under that sort of like I say lumped under, who was kind of put under that sort of like priority was Kyrie Sane, who recently debuted with WWE. Re-debuted, um, re-debuted with WWE. Um, it's nice to so... see like um, WWE gain an interest, like from like. From like other companies, though, like it's nice to see them actually. You know what I mean. It shows the Triple H is in power because <laughs> yeah. this yeah, is pretty much what yeah, he did in NXT does. in like 2016, where he was just like signing everybody. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, wherever Julia ends up, I think she's definitely a bigger star than just being kind of like in J- Japan, and that's not a slight against Japan. It's just more a case of. She feels more like a global star than someone who's just gonna like ply the trade in one country. Um, she did also recently appear in Impact, which was cool. Yes, yeah, she did. Which and was yeah, madness. She crimed Giselle Shaw, which was upsetting, but also very nice. Um, because it's good to see Giselle Shaw wrestle Julia. Um, yeah, but yeah, should, it, should we... interesting to see where she ends up. Yeah, yeah. Should, we move, should we move on to some Wrestle Kingdom news? Um, obviously, there was a, a bit of a, a new Japan, a new j- event over the weekend. Um, not seen any of it yet, but apparently Moxley and Great Khan had an absolute banger. Um, yeah, I'm gonna watch that. Um, it was apparently a, it, was, it, was, it was apparently a force contender match that never actually made it into the ring. Fucking <laughs> hell! <laughs> Friend that. of the podcast, Tom Clark, said that Shota and Osprey was legit, like incredible. Match as well, the year. So. Oh, nice. I'll be checking that one out for sure. 
So yeah, um, so they confirmed um, a number of matches over yeah, the weekend um, for Wrestle Kingdom. So they have they officially confirmed um, that Tanada will defend against Tetsuya Naito. Tanada became the longest reigning World Heavyweight IWGP World Heavyweight Champion since the new belt. I feel like three of those yeah. champions have been Okada. <laughs> yeah, speaking of Okada, Faye, he accepted the challenge of Brian Danielson for a rematch. Oh, man. He's getting his I was, I was freaking out. Like... Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and, that and, and, rainmaker arm's getting broke. Another oh, dream it match. so good. Another dream match we're getting is Will Ospreay versus John Moxley. David Finlay is versus also there. Versus David Finlay. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> hey, I, David Finlay is all right by me because he told Aaron he was English. Um, <laughs> he didn't get bonus points for being a menace. I mean, yeah, he, he, did, he did get in Aaron's face and call him an English piece of shit, which made me happy. Um, do, you know, do you know what this is? This is like when you order a lovely steak and chips in a really posh restaurant and you get a lovely well-cooked steak, Some not well done, but, you know, cooked medium rare, nice, you know. Well done. Uh, well cooked. Well made. You some, you, you, well made. Well presented. You get some lovely triple cooked chips, you know, real nice chunky boys. And then someone just puts a fucking big handful of rockets on top of it. And it's like, well, I mean, it's not going to ruin the meal, but like, I don't need it. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. That's I, what it feels like. I'll, I'll be honest. I think David Finley's winning that match. I do. Osprey's so, on his way out. Mox only go, goes there every now and again. So make basically, more sense for Osprey to win this. Finley destroyed both the belts, didn't he? So this was Moxley's... Sorry, this was um, Osprey's IWGP UK title, which is also the US title. Yeah. What if they... What? Like, someone saw this, I saw this on Twitter. What if they just bring back the Intercontinental title? Because that was really that's nice. What saying. That's what Osprey was kind of like hinting at, because he wanted that belt. I think... I, th- I want to say that's the only belt he's not held in New Japan. Mm-hmm. Like singles mm-hmm. belt, I should say. Uh, so um, so far then the matches we've got announced for Wrestle Kingdom. Um, could it only, is it only one night this year? Yeah, it's only one yeah, night and then a night um, on the twenty first of Jan as well. Right, Ooh. because fuck anyone who's travelling over specifically to watch this. Uh, are you um, going to New York, Ash, though, Faye? No, I'm in Osaka that time. I think. What? That's absurd. So, do you, well, do you know what it is? Fucking wild. The first match announced. IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Champions. Bullet Club War Dogs, Clark Connors and Driller Maloney. Driller yeah. at Wrestle Kingdom. Like, fucking hell. What have we done? What did we do to the world? That's going to be amazing as well, because that's who Driller betrayed, like, to join they, Bullet Club. It's it's who they beat to win the belts as well. Mm. Yeah. So it's Akira and TJP. Yep. Uh, then yeah. we've got for the junior heavyweight championship, the IWGP junior, um, Hiromu Takahashi versus Despi. I mean, that's, that's always a fucking banger. I can't yeah. wait to see Takahashi's gear. That's going to be great. Yes. Uh, we've got that three way that we just talked about. We've got Danielson versus Okada, and then we've got Sonata versus Naito. So I, think, I feel like obviously there's still a few. There's, it's nude. There's a Eddie, few multi. There's a couple of. Mul- there's a couple of multi. Yeah, Eddie. There's a couple of multi mans get thrown on there as well. Because obviously. And Sheppy's out. Just, ju- just throw Claudio versus Ishii on for reasons. <laughs> oh. Don't, oh, do don't like... need, you don't you don't need to put any story behind it. Just go. Oh, yeah. By the way, is Claudio and Ishii enjoy yourselves? Yeah, just don't even announce it. Just just have them come out and start fighting. <laughs> no, yeah. no match. They just fight, um, and then just have Utah on there as well. Just throw all the BCC there. It's fine. Yeah, that, I've I've Suzuki made the Utah. That'll be nice. Um, no. I mean, Suzuki's got to do something. Fight. Come on, we can't we can't not have Suzuki at Wrestle Kingdom. Why does Utah um, have to be sacrificed? Because it's Utah and he's a little shit. Um, I'm trying to think. Who else might show up at Wrestle Kingdom? Who we've not. I mean, Mercedes Monet is surely due back soon. Yeah, so there was an, an, another news story here that there was no plans. She, has, she doesn't have any bookings with New Japan or Stardom going forward currently. Mm. They want to back, didn't they? They were quite vocal about that. Yeah, but that, I, I I'm guess that's, I'm guess that's just a case if they haven't been in touch because she's just still not cleared to wrestle yet. So. It was a nasty injury, to be fair. And like, Bear in mind that all in, she was still walking around with a boot on. Yeah. yeah. Which would indicate that it's still got a little bit of healing to do. Obviously, that was like two, well, over two months ago, but still. A, an ankle injury can take anything from like three months to a year to heal. So, and then who knows? Best as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I just I just want Mercedes money back. I miss her. 
Speaking of things you need to do while you're in um, Japan, Faye, do you know there is a Warhammer cafe in Tokyo as well? Fuck off, is there? I, I think you don't have to, but if, if you were to go and were to order a Space Marine themed coffee, that would make me very happy. Okay, I can do that just for you. <laughs> it's in um, it's in that place where all the video game shops oh, are. So hey, it's like oh, hey. Akihabara. Yeah, 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 we'll be there anyway. Hey, it's fine. Don't don't do it for tasty. Do it for the emperor. Yeah, but then you you have to shout for the, I mean, because no one else will ever have done it. You shout for the emperor before you drink your coffee, obviously, because that'll okay. be everyone will find it really hilarious because no one's ever done it before. Edge yes. the heretic, kill the Xenos. <laughs> I'm um, I'm going to the Swirinix Cafe again. I'm very excited. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh, nice. Right, any more news anyone wants to bring up before we move on? Um, um, I did see something, but I can't remember what well, it was. Well, 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 Jay scrabbles for that. I'll well, tell... I want to tell you all well, about. Um, but well, hang on, before we move on to, to uh, there's um, a significant sponsorship plan for a AEW Dynamite match next week. Uh, yeah, the match, the match of um, Chris Jericho, Kenny Chris Omega, Kota Ibushi, whoa, and Paul whoa. White. Well, you call it by its real name, the Jericho Megaverse. The Jericho Megaverse, feature, the Golden Jericho Megaverse. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, sponsored by Sonic 06. It's, sponsored, it's literally sponsored by Sega, so it's going to be yeah. Kenny Omega dressed as Sonic and Chris Jericho dressed as a human woman, just deep kissing. Ew. <laughs> Only if you have Kota Ibushi dressed as Amy and she's just like fuming in the corner. And if, if Ichiro isn't dressed as Big the Cat, I'll be so upset. I, I want Kota Ibushi to be dressed as Tails just for the lols. <laughs> no one likes um, tails. The fan, girl, no, the fan girls would not would take that too well. No, we can't. <laughs> like that. All right, Tum- don't, don't Tumblr enough. would be Tumblr would be too too empowered by that. We can't have yeah. it. <laughs> Tumblr must be stopped. Um, <laughs> not if you keep uh, saying w- Jericho Megaverse, like it makes them stronger. Well, excuse me, Jericho Megaverse. Paul White's there as well. Show the man some respect. You look like you could barely walk. How dare you! He did. Um, I, he walked just fine when he punched Kyle Fletcher in the face. Um, sh- shall we quickly run through the results of Crown Royal, or are we asked about that? I really don't care. So no. Okay. Uh, okay. No one, nobody, nobody was killed by the government, so it's fine. That's yeah. a win, I guess. Lol, Roman wins, and everyone wins. was allowed to fly home. Everyone was allowed to fly home on time, so it went, it went as well as could be expected. And Seth wore well, a pretty coat. Lol, Roman wins against the next star that the fans really want to see do well. Um, Remember that hot guy you really like? Yeah, Roman crushed him. It's fine. Yeah, um, Roman, Roman beaten by the by interference and burial. Um, yeah. Uh, the the main talk- thing was Kyrie, Kyrie Sane showing up. Yeah. Uh, also, we- Logan Paul is now a champion in WWE, which makes me sad. I want to think about that. Thank you. Let's move on. Right. Yeah. Let's talk um, to me, Dub, and let's talk about the worst episode of Dynamite of all time, apparently. I wouldn't did say it was the worst really ever, but it was. Much. The internet, the in- Jay, the internet has decided. I'm sorry. I, I didn't I think did it was a good episode it. of Dynamite. I, I mean, fine. it wasn't I bad. Just, I, I'd say no, it, it wasn't was a, bad. I'd, I'd, I'd say it was a solid seven out of ten for Dynamite, if oh, you're great on a scale. I'd, I'd go a little bit lower than that. I mean, it opened with Orange Cassidy versus Claudio Castagnoli. It, yeah. It start. Yeah. It started off strong and it finished strong, but there was a lot of filler in between. I mean that you're describing wrestling, Jay. Like you're describing all wrestling. An anime. How, how, how dare you? Well, yeah. Yeah. How dare you? Uh, but um, no, Orange versus Claudio, like absolutely fucked. I really enjoyed that. I did, yeah. Um, like some again. of the some of the some of the times Claudio was just like countering moves into like other moves it was just yeah. ridiculous. So like, you, f- you forget that the people, the things he's moving around are full human people. Yeah, Cla- Claudio's really literally got like the fucking strength of of Donkey Kong, hasn't he? He yeah. has the strength of ten men. <laughs> um, um, uh, oh, sorry, my uh, browser just decided to die as I was looking through the notes. No, uh, um, so yeah, I mean, I, I like also like obviously Orange beat him, and then after the match, Moxie came out and just absolutely fucking murdered him. And oh, even Claudio that. looked uncomfortable by this. Yeah, even Claudio was like, "Come on, mate, this this ain't it." Picked him up and just carried him off the ring. Right. Yeah. T- tasty. Um. How how long do you reckon until it's BDK time? Oh, I mean, there's there's, there's that, a lot of signs, isn't there? That it that 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 plane's coming into land, isn't it? 
Yeah. Uh, right. How do we feel about the MGF acclaimed bits? I enjoyed them. Um, I thought they were quite fun. I did think there was maybe one too many. Yeah, I think it's um, spinning the wheels now. I think I, I think you have to repeat it over the course of the show for it to like have its effect because it was like every time like MGF like having a bit of bad luck, he turns around and Max just to say like, like yeah. thumbs up at him and like you know ready to go. I did like Wardlow as well. Wardlow basically um basically said he was going to yeah. take everything from MGF when he least expect it. Although that's a normal one over that, by the way, completely normal. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think Max is in danger. Um, uh, I thought that Orin, that John Moxie promo was fucking excellent. Uh, yeah, it was that like, was really it, good. It felt like he just called the camera there, like it wasn't even scheduled. It was like, yeah. Mm. Well, he it, said, it was, he, he, it, he it was like, like Moxie had looked at the cameraman and was yeah. just like, you're going to fucking film me. It was like, because um, he said, like, he, obviously he, he respected him and he, he showed him respect before their last match. And now, like, Orange is basically and turned around. To. Yeah, and he's like, he's turned around and done this. I thought for a second when he was like, when he was setting, so I thought it was going to challenge into a death match. I thought, yeah, I thought we were going to go fucking insane. Uh, Blood orange. Blood um, orange. But no, so it is going to be Moxie versus Orange of Full Gear for the uh, for the international title, which is great. So, I one thing I will say about this, I don't think Mox should win. I don't know. It feels like, unfortunately, this storyline's kind of gone to fuck. Like, I, I feel like there was going to be a, like a year-long storyline of Orange like building himself back up and overcoming Mox eventually. Like, because this is the this is the one thing he couldn't do. And then now it feels like it's all because like everybody got injured. It feels like it's happened over the space of like three weeks. So I I think that Orange should retain the same way they did against Claudio, like by just like a lucky roll up, mm. and then they can run this back at World's End. Oh, okay. and then and Mox can murder him. Well, no, I still think Orange should win the feud. No, because no, no, <laughs> hear me out here. Because Mox doesn't fucking need it. It's fine. Fail be in Japan. No opinion won't Mo- matter. Mox, Mox can come out of this absolutely fine from losing. And then made a Will Osprey as him as yeah, exactly. Have him, you know, David Finley's there. He can just fucking elbow him to death. It's fine. Get, 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 um, pinned by, get pinned by Orange, get straight on a plane, fly straight to Japan without even having calmed down, get straight into a ring and just punch Will Ospreay to death. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> um, I'd prefer that. And then Will Ospreay um, can show up in AEW and Mox can do the, just get off the plane after him. And... <laughs> or, or Osprey could go to the Fed because, you know, he was teasing a match with Seth. Keep it, keeping that seat warm for him, Kenny. Will Osprey, ver- Will Osprey versus the Miz, yeah, uh, it'd be great. Yeah. Uh, next up, then uh, we have the wait. Bucks. The Bucks lose the Ring of Honor six-man titles back to well, the Embassy. I don't want to talk about this. Uh, the Bucks, um, fight. the Bucks are evil now. The Bucks are bad guys. They're all oh, upset. They're all angry. Matt Jackson is a whiny little bitch. CM Punk was right to punch him. Are they all upset because they can't get cooked by Victoria anymore? Ah, uh, mate, they're so upset about not being able to get cooked by Tara. I don't blame them. I'd be upset about that as well, but, you know. Um, yes. they just have, well, cause, because, they heard about, because they heard about TNA coming back, do they have flashbacks to Generation Me and they just got really really angry? Is that what happened? <laughs> what in, Matt, Matt what Jackson just though? thought about Eric Bischoff saying he wasn't a good wrestler and started hitting the fucking ring post of the chair. Yeah. Um, what really annoyed me, though, is that we've got no BTA to follow this up. Yeah. Like, I was really well, hoping... For a BTE episode here, like to like the, the, there was a BT mini episode here tonight, and it's yeah, but it's not and like it's got, it's got story ramifications because Bram and Quattle was hanging out with Prince Nana. Oh God! Okay. So yeah, actually, fate it has. <laughs> oh no! Uh, next oh. up, we had MGF wrote emo bitch on Darby Allen's dressing room, which well, was funny. Well. Let, let's just address what happened with the uh, ROH six-man tag titles because we didn't quite get there, did we? Because um, we were too busy annoying Faye. Um, <laughs> we, we it, 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 it was a valid use of our time. It's fun. Yeah, we, we got we got lost in the fact that Matt Jackson's a little crybaby. Um, we know this. and We do know this. Um, and, yeah, so Swerve came out uh, and Hangman just ran off after him and then they had like a big brawl in the back, and then Nick Jackson basically just got crimed by Gates of Agony while Matt was on on the outside sulking or something. Um, He's looking at his own reflection, like um, like a bed. He, he, was, he was too busy trying to fucking 
getting tumbled his head and not paying attention on the fucking <laughs> the task at hand. Yeah. Um but yeah, so uh the Mogul Embassy have retained the titles, rightfully so. I thought it was a bit of a weird decision for them to lose in yeah, the first too. place. Um it, because let's face it, Homebooks weren't ever showing up at final battles. No. Well, I mean this it was Even just a whole the, the whole point. The whole point of it was just to, to give the, the elite something to lose, wasn't it? They had to like lose something. Yeah. Um it was to give Hangman something to annoy Swerve going into that uh, match against Swerve. Uh, off the back of this as well, we did get announced Swerve versus Hangman 2, so I'm okay with that. Yep. Um, but yeah, it, it was cool seeing like Swerve and Hangman getting like separated while Swerve was just cackling away like a lunatic and Nana was still dancing in the background. Um, but yeah, um, and then as you say, MJF called Darby an emo bitch, which was funny. Great. Yeah. Um, some edge stuff, which I've literally forgotten happened. Um, but basically, just making the match official. Yeah, um, he's like, he's like, oh yeah, Edge, yeah, Edge. After, 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 after saying he won't wrestle Christian, Edge now has decided that he will wrestle Christian. So that's well, fine. I, I thought this was quite well done because Christian took it too far, mm. and that's what made that's what made Adam then go, "I'm going to fucking kill him." Because Christian yeah. was like, "I'm going to put you in a wheelchair," and then threatened to concert to him and break like, his yeah, neck. You, your kids aren't going to you aren't going to be able to play with your daughters and shit like that. And yeah, yeah, just um, a horrible bastard. Next up, then Tony's massive announcement. It should have just been Nigel doing this. It should have just been Nigel because Tony was just like rambling on, like going, "Oh yeah, my mum and dad had the Christmas tree up in July." The like, great, well done, Tony. No one gives a shit. To be fair, Jay, it always snows in the Khan household. <laughs> Yeah, it's Isn't like a fucking Nigel snow globe. Isn't that doing like some sort of like card trick? That would have been fun. That would have been cool. Yeah, a little bit of close up, a little bit of close up magic. Uh, but yeah, basically, yeah. Um, all in tickets are going on sale on December th- and December first because they must be fucking petrified that they're not going to sell out this year. I mean, I think they're going to sell out on. Well, not sell out, but they're going to sell it well, aren't they? Well, yeah, they, I mean, they're not going to sell as fast as last year because it's not the first ever AW show. So I think they want to get out ahead of it and maybe give them a little bit longer mm. to buy the tickets. So People can buy them for Christmas. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Give, give the gift of watching John Moxley chase, I don't know, Orange Cassidy around the stadium with something on fire. Yeah, give give the gift of Eddie Kingston killing man like Reese again. <laughs> oh, yeah. in, in an executive suite in Wembley. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yes, please. I, I like I like to think that Eddie like realized it was the Risu that just like put a diss track <laughs> off on him before he had to pull yeah. out of that show. And he was like, It's you. Yeah. Um again we, we had the jet the Don Callis family stuff. Um I won't go into detail because it it went on a bit, but it's um, Mega, yes. Yeah. Uh Kozu Bushi's joining in for the match. Uh Kyle Fletcher's there for some reason. Um, even though Don Callis has spent the last like three weeks bagging on him. Um but it's fine. <laughs> Uh, and then yeah. Tall Paul. Tall Paul's coming out to save Chris Jericho. Jericho's back, baby. Once he, once he gets there eventually. I mean, yeah, he's, he's, set off, he's, set, he's set off now, so he might make it to the ring by the 15th. Yeah. He, he you, looked... know, you know what? Say, say what you know about Paul White, right? But I actually really enjoyed him on Rampage on commentary this week. I like Paul White. I, just I don't like Paul White, fine. As, I... as, as somebody with less than perfect knees, I feel his pain every time I see him. Yeah. Um... Yeah, he, poor sod. But he, he's obviously able to still wrestle because. Yeah, I mean, if, if he's happy to go, then I mean, I, I, yeah. I would love to see. I mean, if I was, if this was happening at all in, and it was like a fun little ten minute comedy match, I'd be fucking psyched that I got to see we, a white wrestler. We were meant to get that, weren't we? Yeah. Yeah. We were meant to, was wasn't it meant to be like, uh, Paul White Gray though on the Hardys versus someone? I can't well, remember. Then they, the then oh, they forgot Garrett. the Jeff. They forgot the Jeff Hardy still isn't allowed in the UK. Yeah. Jarrett and um, friends. Next up, then we had the books to go in like full dickhead on Kenny and Hangman. It felt like all yeah. uh, BTA. Yeah. Matt Jackson just the fucking. We're a hundred percent getting um Golden Lovers versus the Young Bucks, aren't we? The Golden yeah. Jets versus the Young Bucks. No. The Jericho Megaverse versus the Young no. Bucks. That's what's happening. Uh, that's genuine. That's genuinely what's no. happening, Faye. No. It's it's oh. definitely going to be that and not the fucking Golden can, Lovers. Can we move on from this cursed talk? And I want to talk about one of my favourite matches of the week, which was Hikaru Shida versus Willow Nightingale. 
Yeah, this was this fun. This was very good. Yeah, I really yeah. enjoy this. Um, they're both fucking excellent. I mean, Willow had a Willow had a good week. Um, we'll talk a bit more about it later. But yeah, this was yes. this was really this was really good fun. Um, just I want to just just give Willow a belt, please. Uh, I know you give her the Owen, but like it's belt time now. Yeah. Do you reckon? Um, I, well, I thought she was going to take the TBS off Chris the other week. Mm. I mean, shout I out to Willow. Shout out to Willow. Willow kicked out of an Avalanche Falcon Arrow at one. Which was just oh, yeah. beautiful. Um, she kicked out of um, uh, Thomas Shea as well, didn't she? I think so. Yeah. Um, yes. But yeah, Willow's great. Fucking push Willow. Um, Tony Storm came out after the match with Luther. Um, is this when... Um, this wasn't the orange bit, was it? No. This was when um, she did. So Tony Storm comes out and hits a pose and she just had enough and just runs up and fucking knees Tony Storm so hard in the face that the entire world actually goes black and white. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah, and then just chased Tony off, which was brilliant. Yeah, that's right. And then uh, Julia Hart came into the ring. Um, Hart was trying to spooky fight Willow and then Sky Blue came out. And then Sky Blue spat Blue Mist into Julia Hart's face. Yeah, I don't which, know what's going on, but I'm intrigued. She's got to go super cute and adorable. Julia no, because Sky's still all brood and I'm like emo as fuck. What if Julia yeah. Hart just becomes more Chicago? <laughs> oh, no. Like she comes, um, she comes out next week and instead, instead of a hat, she's just like a deep dish pizza and like, you know... She's got, like a, she, she, she's, got like, she's got like a Cubs jersey on and, you know, she's just like, yeah. Uh, just got a Chicago Bears logo like st- stitched onto her hat. <laughs> um, God. That's cute. They're, now the, they're now the House of White Sox. Oh, See what no. I did there? Oh, no. um, the, so, yeah. the, House of Bl- the House of Black Sox. That's a, that's a Chicago reference. Um, the ones that the House, uh, House, House, of, House of Black Hawks, mate. It was right there. I know, but the Chicago Black Sox. Cause yeah, the, the, the White Sox, mate. Did. No, no, no. The Black Sox are the White Sox who did the bat and scandal. You fixed oh, the games. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, okay. Fucking tell me. <laughs> um, tell me that shit. More MGF acclaim stuff. MGF's um, got some special gear. Yeah, Very well, he, he he gets that, and then he, he like it, it, he did a little bait and switch here, which I liked. Where he like kind of like turned, like, oh yeah, I've got another team in mind, and it's just like Jared, Lethal, Sunjay, and Satnam. Also, <laughs> they're like grinning like idiots. <laughs> yeah, it's like oh, it's us, it's us, and it's like oh, he's like, oh for fuck's oh. sake. <laughs> Oh, um, well, the also, FaceTime. Hammerstone was teasing on the old Twitter, wasn't he? That the dynasty could have. He was. But then also, MJF did then put a picture of him up with Richard Holiday's ex girlfriend, which was a bit weird. So, who knows? Um, who knows what's going on there? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then we got that like cool kingdom and Adam Cole there. Yes. Um, they, phoned, they phoned Adam Cole up and like to moan at him for not getting picked, and Adam was like, just shut uh, up. Roderick Strong's doing the fucking Lord's work. He's just he's just fucking great, isn't he? It was on um it was on was it Rampage or Collision this week when he just started screaming Dasha Dasha <laughs> That was it that was excellent. Um yeah, this... I really hope he's shouting Marina through the house exactly the same. <laughs> I'm I'm glad um, Marina should be is not getting involved in all these like Roddy Wits. Really fun main event. Um so it ended up being Bullock with Gold. Obviously, Jay White, The Guns, and Juice, and Carblade. Uh, he wasn't there after Carblade, was he? I didn't see him. Came out the uh, end. He did come out at the end, yeah. Has Carblade been banned from Dynamite in retaliation? <laughs> um, no. This is basically MGF and the Acclaimed. Uh, it was a full match. It was a little chaotic, because obviously there was a lot of guys, um, and a lot of it was just Max Caster getting his ass kicked while MGF like, watched, basically. I think the um, point of it is that is it, they're not meant to work because yeah. of like well it was it was like it, it was MGF is obviously kayfabe the best wrestler because he's the champion but because his team wasn't a team and the Bullock of Gold are yeah. like this slick machine aren't they like they they kind of had the advantage most of the match uh, huge um, huge scenes at the end so MGF hits the kangaroo kick but then Jay White hits him with a blade runner and pins him clean so good clean as a whistle. Yeah, um, I, it's, which, it's just a precursor of what's happening in full gear. Which meant crucially that MGF did not get his belt back. That's the whole point of the match, wasn't it? Uh, then well, after the I, match, well, he nearly got his belt back right at the end because um, Jerry was going to feed it to him. 
but then uh, Max Caster took the hit, and uh, yeah. Oh. And MJF's never he... going to hold that belt again because Jay White's going to beat him a full game. <laughs> the forever champion. The bang bang belt. Uh, so yeah, and then afterwards, um, like Max Caster's like fucking dead, and he's like trying to scissor MJF, and MJF's like no, and then Billy Gunn just screams at him, fucking scissor him, and so loud you could hear yeah. it on camera. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Scissor, um, you little shit. And then they scissor, and then Max like sort of hugs MJF's crotch because he's a bit of a weirdo. Yeah. It was a bit strange, wasn't it? Yeah, Damn but it, I don't think that show was as bad as people said. Like, it, was it the no, best night of all time? Was... No, but I, I'd I'd say it was a solid six out of ten. We just of went through it. We, we just went through it match by match, and it was perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it wasn't the best. There was bits that I was a bit like, ugh, bye, but when it was good, it was really good. Yeah. Uh, Rampage, I mean, we'll, we'll literally blow through this, but the Lucha match was fucking incredible. Go and watch it. Oh, it was so good, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was just Penta doing murders on, like... Yeah. So it was Penta, Vikingo, and Commander. The, 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 the bits were, like, somewhat, like, Commander did, like, a a sort of crossbody on pen through then like turned into like a pile driver and like then did a backflip and then like Vikingo came out of nowhere and did something uh, else. Penta reversed their commander's run shooting star press into a code breaker which was fucking insane. That was incredible yeah and the, uh, the bit at the end as well. When when uh, Vikingo went to do the coast coast to coast and uh, commander just appeared from nowhere and fucking caught him in a lager bomb. Yeah and the finisher was Penta hitting commander with a fear factor on top of Vikingo and then pinning him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. After after he did the um after he did the fucking gory bomb um package pile driver on the apron as well. Yeah. It was it like, was just it, it was just V going commander doing flips and Pentax fan. I'm just gonna fucking kill both these fools. So good. Yeah, it's like it? Penta was like, Oh, I'm I'm the big man in this match. I'm gonna fucking <laughs> kill everybody. I saw did you see there's a picture on Twitter going around this week and Penta's in like just ridiculous shape. He was staying with his top off and he just is just yeah. muscle. He's just so yeah, jacked. He looks like he's got a fucking fist trying to punch its way out of his stomach. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was great. Um, Gun squashed Daniels and Sadell. Fine. Um, Sky Blue had a decent match with Marina Shafir. I enjoy this. Sky yeah. Blue, she's putting together a really good body of work lately. And Marina Shafir gets better every time I see her in AW. Yeah. We, we did We did get that uh, RJ City and Dan House thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so, like, did you notice that, like, he like shared one of CM Punk's old tweets. Yeah, yeah. Like apparently, well, I don't... yeah. I, I don't uh, know if I, I think people read into stuff like yeah. that a little bit too much. After that as well, we had um, Ruby Soho and Angelo Parker getting horny on main again. He did. Yeah, I don't like this now. <laughs> Daddy does, Magic does it, got really angry about it. Does it mess with the fanfics phase that way? What? It's 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 Tumblr. It's, <laughs> how 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 did Tumblr it's, feel about Ruby Soho and yeah? This. Has this has this angered the old gods of Tumblr? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> um, speaking of Tumblr, Daniel Garcia defeated Trent Barreta in an absolute banger as well. Yeah, oh, that was good. That was so good. And then called out MJF. He did, yeah. Yes. Um And then he was given, he was awarded um, for this week on Dynamite a title match. Yeah. He deserved it. Oh, did you see his? Did you see his pants? He's got dragon scales on his pants. Yes, yes, I, I, I did see that. Yes, but uh, the, the, the match, uh, the end of the match, basically was Garcia slapped Trent like really hard across the face, did a little dance, and hit him with a power driver. Uh, and then and got him in, like that modified cross face and just yeah, got him in, like a submission. Trent tapped out. But yeah, it was really really good. Uh, in, interestingly, yeah. in the in the promo as well, when he was calling MGF, he nearly called himself a pro wrestler and then stopped and called himself a sports entertainer. That was that was very oh. good. Did did you notice as well um, in the video package on Collision that they kept like going back between like MJF saying you're gonna need to be like the best pro wrestler you can be and like showing like Garcia in his old gear. Yeah, yeah. it's coming. It's coming. Uh, right. Well, again, we'll just to finish up. We'll bash through Collision again, sort of quick as we can, really. Oh, um, don't you mean the, don't you mean the Roos show? The Roos show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like that, so this show started. Brilliantly with AR Fox and Swerve brawling out from the back as the fireworks went off. Well, yeah, it was like on the 
on the like kind of like promos at the start and like Swerve was talking while Nana was dancing the whole time. Yeah. And AR Fox just like coming and fucking pumpkin Swerve mid like sentence. And he just yeah. started brawling down to the ring. Was really fun match. Really really Swerve hit a, a new move, which he calls the home invasion, which is a power bomb into a power slam. <laughs> Does he? Oh, uh, brilliant. Do, do, uh, we yeah. know, do we know if he gave uh, Hangman's Child any more uh, I hope not. premium quality Prince Nana merchandise? Probably, I don't think so. We, we didn't see any anyway. Um, so yeah, uh, that was really fun, really fun match. Um, and then there was loads of fuckery afterwards, so like, Gates of Agony came out, um, and then FTR mm-hmm. came out, um, and yeah. then Big Bill and Starks came out, and then... I think that's getting too much. I think there's too much. Oh, well, I... just, just FTR is just getting too much. I mean, yeah, but like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, in that, like, thing, I think it's getting, like, too crowded. When people when people are saying, like... like, there's too much, like, WWE-isms, I think this is one of the things they might be talking about. This is very WWE, isn't it? Like, having everybody out all of the time. Like, you know, in every, like, you know, it's like things like, oh, every segment must have, like, the guys in the main event on, so everyone remembers that they're in the main event. Like, we don't, we don't need to do that. I, I feel like, this whole angle is building up to like some kind of massive gimmick match, but I don't know Tag what. Team Apocalypto, fucking bucket Tony Khan. You oh coward. yeah, yeah, total <laughs> non-stop deletion. It's almost like I was a year out of here. that. Let's fucking go. <laughs> they, they look so upset right now. Um, I don't know what that is. Don't worry about it. Um, hey. it, a, it very, just, a, a very, a very pointed. Not hardy and lots of drugs. A very pointed um, promo from MJF after this, when he basically says, uh, mm-hmm. "These days in AW, there's a lot of old men talking and young men dying." Yeah, that wow. is true. That is true. Um, yeah, it's uh, basically it was just kind of the um, building up to MJF and Jay White some more, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, it was the aftermath of the match. Uh, great promos from both of them. Jay, Jay White, it really feels like is it's his time. The promo like he the caught, more... the, the, the Bullet Club promo afterwards was really good as well. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, um, them just taunting MGF, which was great. Yeah, the, the the more that the more that Jay White kind of is around this like main event picture, the more like it feels like he's getting sort of primed to be like the big bad of AEW. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Yep, this is this is absolutely fine. Juice and Juice is oh. there as his like as his um his ELP. He yeah, he well he is the if, if Jay White's Cobra Commander, then Juice is the Juice is Christopher Eccleston in the film, which we don't talk about because it was bad. Um but yeah, yes. it's fine. Um, um next up, Kip Sabian got a little a little bit of my time, which was nice. Always I'm, nice I'm to always see him. His slutty, slutty sleeves. Yep, and he introduces his partners, the Sex Dallions. Yeah. Um, I love JD Drake's face when he got called a sex value. <laughs> Just not in a dream, like, okay, yeah. Like, Andy Henry's like obviously down with it, and JD Drake's like, oh, okay, then yeah, I guess so. Um, JD Drake's fantastic. He's such yeah. an underrated player. Um, next up, then, we had uh, the Kingdom squashing two guys. Um, and then, as a, an, a, a miracle, an act of God, uh, afterwards, Roddy Strong rises from his wheelchair. And knees one of them in the face, and then Nigel's to... reaction to this was amazing. <laughs> uh, N- Nigel was doing the Lord's work on commentary all night on this show. To be fair, it's the fact that like Roddy went down holding his neck though after. <laughs> yeah, it was like, oh no, he's overexerting himself, and I'm carrying him into the wheelchair. <laughs> uh, you know, you're saying it took everything out of him to hit that one move, and then yeah, he had to be uh, held back into the ring. Uh, yeah, next Roddy up. Strong. Fucking brilliant. Next up, we had Lexi interviewing Mark Briscoe. FDR volunteered to help, and the, um, but he said he's already got his own um, tag team partner, so it's fine. Um, and then Lance, Lance Archer's back with Jake. Ah, oh, that was so the, good. The, the Lexi trying not to laugh challenge with Mark Briscoe, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that's that's exceptional. Um, the thing is, though, right, when is Lance Archer going to give MJF his obligatory title, like... Yeah, he's, he's, through he, Lance you've, Archer. You've got to beat Lance Archer um, to, to become a, yes. to be a real champion. Tell Sarah that. Uh, uh, did, Dar- Darby did, wins did, with yeah, a... yeah, yeah. Did, did Kenny and Jericho both beat him? Or was this just a thing that Lance Archer did afterwards? No, it's just, it's just face champions, which MJF now is, so you know. Uh, uh, it's 
like Mox did it. Mox did Hang, Hang, Hanger did it, and now no Orange did it as the international champion. He did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There we go. And we had Derby won with a top rope Canadian destroyer, which was fucking ridiculous. Yeah. You're forgetting um, a... Yeah. Oh no, you know. Carry on. Um. The um the bit. Lantar, I've re- I just really missed Lantar, yeah, on my screen. Really gl- I'm just really glad he's back, which is nice. Yeah. And then uh, after the match, Jake came back because Jake got sent. Jake got sent to the back during the match, and after the match, well, he comes before, out. Before we talk about this, can we just mention that suplex that Lance did on Derby on the fucking ramp? Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, um... he just launched him down the fucking entrance ramp. Didn't he like choke slam him like over the? Over the rope, he, as oh, well. yeah, he chokes on them onto the apron as well. Yeah, he yeah. threw him like over the ring ropes onto the apron, and he just like sort of bounced off. And like, Darby's gonna die. Like, like yeah. I mean, we said we, we, we joked, I mean, like, this was basically Darby just saying, my, my, my trainer said I need to climb something tall this week to prepare for Everest, and turns out, like, well, you can fight Lance Archer, then there you go. Yeah, <laughs> uh, after the match, Jake comes back out because he'd been sent to the back, and he said he's got some backup, and it's the righteous. I oh, popped like a close. motherfucker for this. Yeah, and they Vincent sort of distracts Darby with some some like cryptic speech, and then Lance just rises like a fucking horror villain behind him <laughs> and gets yeah, him in a blackout. Lance in all white, a whiteout. Yeah, yeah, um, which is great. I'm really into these guys as a trio. I think that could be really good fun. Uh, yeah. What's happened to Stu? Can can we take um? Oh, stuff. Don't worry about Stu. He's yes. fine. They, they left him ring of honor. He's just crying in a room by himself now while Evil Luno tries to like work up the courage to go and talk to him. Um, gym. I want, I want, the, I want um, Lance Archer and the Righteous to go back to Jake's like really shindy wrestling ring in his back garden and cut some promos there. That was so yes. good when he was doing that during the pandemic, <laughs> just killing people in Jake's fucking garden. <laughs> yep, I, I just want that back basically. Um, next, yeah. oh, Alex yeah, Hunters um, interrupted Swerve and Nana. Yeah. And um... Swerve said that he's going to beat up um, Penta. So, yeah, there we go. He also threatened to unmask Penta, which is yeah. interesting. Yeah, he did, yeah. He was like, I used to wear a mask. Yeah. Sad kill shot noises. Poor kill shot. Um, uh, next, next, then, the 69 celebration from the acclaimed. I no, kind of, of I, field, yeah, yeah, I enjoyed this, and a lot of people hated it. I, it's it's the sort of childish humor that I really enjoy, and also Nigel McGuinness was just making. Yeah. <laughs> what he said? He said if it was Kevin Kelly and Tony, it'd be in '96. But when oh, he when God. he said that when he said them, um, oh, was it something like, oh yeah, you can, you can't '69 like you used like you used to you with the cost of restaurants like... going up. Yeah. Cost of eating out these days. The, co- the cost of eating out these days going almost <laughs> like that. Like, fucking hell. Yeah, Billy Gunn um, basically just threatening to 69 everyone in the crowd, which is something I never thought I'd hear him say. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then they did great. the New Age Outlaws type thing, which, which popped yeah. me. Yeah. Really... And then what popped me then was Dalton Castle and the boys came out. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was. Um, so again, they, they had like an impromptu match, which um, ended when, um, well, we Dalton Castle destroyed the, the, destroyed the um, the trophy. Six one out trophy. Yeah, and then they had an impromptu match, which ended when um, Dalton Castle got hit with a pinata. He did. And it's then the boys got pinned afterwards. So this was this was on social media. It wasn't on the show. Dalton Castle like cut a, a, an impassioned promo. With Lexi backstage, where he makes one of the one of the lines he said, he said the boys after the after like the, the acclaim cheated to win because they hit him with a pinata. He said the boys are so upset they haven't even left their chambers. Chambers, where does he live? <laughs> On a peacock, which was incredible. Um, so yeah, this this was just silly fun and also had if Dalton Castle and the acclaim are starting a thing, then I'm all about this because so good. Yeah. Well, before um, um, before like Ring of Honor decided to go for sale, they turned Dalton Castle heel and he was abusing the boys. Oh God! Oh, I, don't think, um, I, don't, I don't think I don't think I'm ready for that. I don't I don't want animal abuse at Dalton I, Castle. But he he was he was fucking amazing as a heel. So if we get heel Dalton Castle. I'm okay with it. Just rattling cages, just literally having in cages, just shaking the cages. Um, <laughs> he'd do oh, that. He'd go, over he'd, them. He'd what? He'd what? Like do talent scouting for like his next, his next, like his new boys. 
and he just kicked people in the dick because he wasn't impressed by them. Great. Wow. Yeah. Uh, next Always up, directed, like, we had um, Andrade get an interview backstage. He basically said he's going to answer CJ Perry next week. So yeah, there we go. That's going to be him. Do you reckon him and Miro at full gear? Do you reckon that's where we're going with this? Yeah, I think Miro's going to cry him. Mm. If, if Miro doesn't Roosh Will because he's fucking shunned the LFI twice now. Who doesn't kill him Roosh Will? Um, if, like, Roosh is fucking... You know he's angry about it. He's angry about everything. Yeah. Um, Mark Briscoe challenged Jay White next week, so that'll be fun. Well, um, yeah, that, that was that was off the back of um, Mark Briscoe, Keith Lee, and Dustin Rhodes defeating Kip and the Work Horseman. The oh, yeah, Stallions. Don't about that, yeah. Weird, the that, Stallions. That felt like a weird thrown together team. Well, Swerve and uh, sorry, Keith Lee and Dustin are attacked, have been attacked before, haven't they? So yeah. it's it's kind of a thing. Naturally and- limitless. Natural limits, yeah. So yeah, it was, it was fine. It was, it was fun. It was, it was a thing that happened. Um, I, I feel, I feel like it was more to kind of get a win for for Keith and a win for Mark, just so mm. they can then move on. Like, it, it, move kind, on it kind of heats up both up, ready for what what's coming, doesn't it? Um, yeah, yeah. Is also there. Um, next up, Willow Nightingale versus Emmy Sakura. Fucking loved this. More, more oh. of this, please. Willow's great. Emmy's oh, great. Emmy. This match was great. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah it was more, it was fun. Um, Willow hit the Doctor Bomb for the win, which was lovely. Yeah, you'd love to see it. More Emmy Sakura on television, please. Yeah, yes. and more Willow. Just happy you two run it back every week. Um, it'd be fine. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Then the and King then, of Ch- television. Yeah, you want matches. You want big boys. You want fucking host daddies. Did, did you see the post they put out today? Yes. It's oh my god. It's it's everything. No. Like, it, so it was it was like the King Kong I, I put it on Discord before. It's like the King Kong versus Godzilla one. Where oh, it's you, like know how, a load, you know how it's, it's like the it's Godzilla like version this year. They're basically doing yeah. that. Yeah. It's like a load of buildings and it's looking up and there's two kaijus just stood next to each other. Oh, I love that. Fucking great. Um yeah, this'll be fun. Do you reckon Keith beats Joe because Joe's broke the record now? I mean I wouldn't be against it. I think Keith could do a lot with that title. Yeah, and also it like Shane Taylor's like obsessed with the ROH TV championship. Yeah, so if they spin that into like Shane and Keith going up feuding over the ROH belt, that'd be I'd be up for that. I think that'd be, they, that'd be nice. They've been feuding anyway, haven't they? So it'd, mm. it'd add it'd add a little something to the to the storyline. Yeah, and it, uh, it gives Keith something to do. Yeah, so then we ended up with the main event, FTR and La Faccione Gobernables versus Ricky Starks and Big Bill and the Gates of Agony, which yeah. this was just Bishop Khan and Tawi Lua. Poor, um... Poor, poor Ricky. I mean, a lot, of, lot, of, big, lot of big boys in this match. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of violence yeah. going around. Well, did you see in the opening segment, Roosh tried to fucking... Start shooting on Tolio, and it was like, all right, Roosh just found this fucking big game that he's hunting. Yeah. And then he just went after everybody. Um, <clears throat> I was, I, I thought Preston looked really good in this as well. Yeah, um, he's. I mean, he's been away a while, but I think he's he's really focused. I, I think I don't know if he's been like training with like Roosh and and Ed Rolisco, but fuck me, yeah. Uh, he haven't, looks you, really good. haven't you seen the vignettes? Tasty, they've been in Mexico, <laughs> <laughs> water blood every week, and fighting all that, underground. All that murdering they've done in Mex- in a Mexican underground has uh, has really paid off. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, the, this was just fucking great. Just Roosh, just crime and everything with a fucking pulse. I missed, um, uh, I've missed the bulls horns a lot. I'm glad that's back. So much. I've, I've just missed Roosh. Like genuinely, he's, he just brings something that not many other people in AEW can. Um, with like the level of intensity he has. I, I mean, the only other there, person who there was a Daniels. bit. I love that there was a bit in this match where I think it was Dax and Roosh tried to hit Big Rig, Bill. Yeah, yeah. And, and he blocked it by just being massive. He was like, no. They, they did hit a Big Rig on someone, though, later in the match. I want to say it was Khan. Yes. Or um, Toa. No, because Cash, di- Cash dived on Toa, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, well, it, was, it was it was it was a fun match. It was it was a little a little sort of chaotic, but then every every time you thought like, oh, this is gonna get a bit silly. Now Roosh just came in and started murdering people, so it was fine. Yeah. Okay. O- also, um, book Prince Nana versus Jose the assistant for final battle, please. Yes. Jose murdering. Nah. Jose's, Jose's fucking jacked. Have you seen him? Yeah. 
Nah, not as a wily veteran. <laughs> uh, yeah, so but yeah. Jose, like, has been in, like, the mean streets of, like, LFI's T- dungeon. Of, of Tijuana, of Rush's yeah. murder dungeon. He's, he's, he's been in Robert Rodriguez movies, mate. He, he knows what's up. Yeah. Um, right, uh, so the match ended when Rush hit the bull's horns on Khan. Afterwards, we had all sorts of fuckery. So, uh, lights go off, House of Black are on the screen. Um, they say that, like... FTR's worth more, Legacy's worth more than their weight in gold, and then the lights come back on, and FTR in the ring, sorry, House of Black in the ring behind FTR, they attack them, then BCC come out, and they chase off House of Black. This was after as well, LFI had like refused to shake hands with, Yeah, uh, yeah. they, they essentially said, they essentially said they just wanted to be in the match because they wanted to fight somebody. Yeah, so you've now got um, a situation where you've got like, LFI, FTR, House of Black, and BCC all like sort of embroiled in the same weird feud, which and, is and then Big Bill and Ricky and Big as well. And Ricky as well, yeah. Yeah. Oof, I I yeah. think I think it's gonna be the I don't know could could be something like Anarchy at the Arena could be a tag team gauntlet match could be tag team battle royal yeah could be stadium stampede could be blood and guts there's so many different I... options you can go with this. I just want BCC and House of Black to have a really meaty feud. I just want Claudio and Malachi to have a 20 minute banger. Yeah. Oh, like that one they had in WWE, but better. Yeah. Um, I want that. I want Buddy versus Roosh more than I think. I, I think, I think. Like that. Yeah. That's. Yeah. I, I, I was going to say, I want LFI versus House of Black out of this, like, so badly. Well, that's where they were going with the whole Andrade thing, weren't they? But, like, LFI haven't been with Andrade since they came back, so that's kind of been a bit... Unless that's where they're going eventually, like, whether they're going to get there. Uh, Andrade, they said he walks along. Yeah, until, like, fucking spooky Malachi's trying to kick his head off. Oh, uh, yeah, un- no, I was going to say until his spooky father-in-law fucking shows up and starts trying to, like, suck the life out of him like a fucking leech. <laughs> I was going to say, once, uh, once helicopter enthusiast Ric Flair turns up, he's going to be running back to LFI. Um, right, uh, I think on that note, that's probably where we best leave leave it for the week. Um, yeah. Should we have a quick wrestle of the week before we before we hang it up? Yeah. Yes. Uh, Anyone want to go first, or should I? I will. Claudio. Big C, yeah. I mean, that orange match was great, wasn't it? And he, mm-hmm. yeah. Swiss. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna have Willow because I thought, yeah, she she really stood out this week. She had two excellent matches. Um, and got a big win over Emmy, which was really nice. I'm going to go for Roosh, because he's back. Because he's back, he's just, kick, he's just kicking the soul out of people. And as always, yeah. just <laughs> that That forearm he did to Ricky Starks may have, like, sent Ricky's jaw into, like, Rosehead. I think it knocked his spirit out of his body, like, in Doctor Strange. Yeah, I think it might have. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, right. In that case, we'll be back next week. Next week, we'll have the last bit of break, uh, the last bit of match announcements, breakdown analysis before full gear. So yeah, keep an eye on it for that. Uh, we'll know hopefully by this time. Hopefully by this time next week, we'll know we'll know all the card. We won't. You never know with full gear, though, do you? Well, no. We we might try and get a predictions video, but then with Collision be being. Fun. Oh wait, no. What's going on with Collision? Right. Is it Friday? Is Collision on Friday instead? Possibly, I don't know. Well, I'm sure they'll tell us that, like, on the last five minutes of Dynamite on Wednesday. Um, like, collisions yeah. right now. Collisions happening now. It started ten minutes ago. Like, oh shit, what's going on? <laughs> uh, right, on that note then, we'll uh, we'll say goodbye. Thank you all for joining us this week. Uh, yeah, see you later. Take care. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Hello, yes, Dan Housen here. Dan Housen has been summoned. You must love this podcast, Housen, the Untitled Wrestling Podcast, Housen. <laughs>